guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video is going to be a Bible review, and I'm so excited to do this review. I have not had this Bible long. I've probably had it for maybe a week. I have used it. I have, uh, you know, checked it out, and I love this bible you guys it is phenomenal and it is this bible here it's the new king james spirit filled bible from thomas nelson this is executive edited by jack w hayford um and yes it is just gorgeous gorgeous this bible does come in various colors if i'm not mistaken there is a hardcover there is the burgundy which i have a brown and a black you can get it thumb index or without the thumb index i don't really care for a thumb index i either prefer to put the bible tabs on myself or just not have any um and it retails anywhere from $50 to about $110. This one I have is $74.99, so basically $75. I did receive this for free via Thomas Nelson from their Book Look Bloggers website, which will be linked down below for you guys to check out. I'm not sure if they're still accepting applicants or not. If not, um, just check it out and stay on the lookout if they are signed up. It's pretty simple. You do have to have a blog with a minimum of a certain amount of followers. I can't recall what it is. I think it's maybe 300 or 200. Um, but again, check the link down below to find out. And, um, yeah, I am so, so excited about this Bible. It is gorgeous. Again, here is the box and i am going to flip through this with you guys walk through it with you guys tell you guys what i like about it tell you guys if there's anything i dislike about it i do recommend if you can get your hands on it to definitely do so i will be getting my mother as a copy of this um a copy <laughs> i will be getting my mother a hardcover version of this bible um but it's stunning and i know a lot of you guys are still waiting for me to do the thompson chain reference bible review that review is coming oh my gosh that's probably one of the the most requested Bible reviews I've been asked to do and it's just so hard trying to figure out how to do it because there's so many parts and just use this to that Bible and honestly I haven't used that Bible in a minute just because you guys know I haven't really been studying like I should um so yeah I'm working on that still we're gonna get it together and I'm gonna say that video will definitely be up before December so if not this month definitely November that video will be posted but this is going to be on the New King James Spiritfield Bible, and I love it so much. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. This is a gift box, and let's just dive into this video. Okay, guys, so here is the little box that it comes in. It's a nice box, pretty sturdy, so you can definitely use this to store your Bible when it's not in use. Um, it just says, sorry about the glare. NKJV Spirit Filled Life Bible Kingdom Equipping Through the Power of the Word Jack W. Hayford, Executive Editor. This is revised and updated, making this the third edition. And as you can see here, I have the Burgundy edition. The back just gives you a little bit of information about what's included, and that's pretty much it here. Again, is the ISBN as well as the pricing of this Bible. Here's the style number, and this is a Thomas Nelson Bible. As I said, you guys know I love Thomas Nelson. My woman's study Bible is a KJV, KJV, KJV translation. I've done a video on that already. You can click the on the screen. But here is the Bible in and of itself. It's absolutely stunning. Oh my God. Um, I really do like the burgundy. It's really, really nice. You have a light like a regular burgundy and then a deeper burgundy it has the dove kind of imprinted here the spine just has what it is imprinted and then the back is simple with the isbn gold gilded edges pay these little tabs no mind these are the things i'm going to show you guys in a second but yeah gold gilded edges it does come with two ribbon bookmarks a brown and a burgundy satin they're thick which i like um and yeah so let's dive into this so like i said the one i have is the imitation leather it feels nice it smells nice um it doesn't have that kind of like leathery smell but um it's a nice smooth leather i really can appreciate that you turn it page and um it just looks like that really simple your presentation page looks as such presented to by and on it's very simple nothing over the top 
the title page definitely says third edition it tells you who were the editors for this Thomas Nelson then you go into your content which is pretty much what every Bible has I mean it tells you like your introduction and stuff but let's just dive into this so it starts out with your introduction and what I'm gonna do is pause this zoom in and focus for you guys okay so here is the introduction about the Bible you then go into your contributors which I think it's always great to know who wrote what in the Bible like the extras and commentaries and stuff like that then we get into the goodies that I love so this basically tells you about the I think there are four different aspects to this Bible let me make sure yeah there are four different aspects outside of it being a study Bible so the first item is the kingdom dynamics which comes like this it just says kingdom dynamics with the dove and it's kind of like a blue box that gives you information basically they are um, 33 things and in seven in-depth articles that are referred to as the kingdom dynamics which are key elements of the life growing devoted disciples I'm sorry of the life of a growing devoted disciple in God's kingdom so you get 33 different things which are broken down into eight groups so you have spiritual foundations prayer power personal growth spiritual empowerment spiritual unity spiritual leadership you have stewardship of life and resources supernatural ministry and then group nine are going to be those seven in-depth articles that you will find at the end of revelations so this is just breaking down the kingdom dynamics um in their order that you will find them in the actual Bible so spiritual foundations like the Word of God the blood of the covenant um, the foundations of the kingdom you have prayer power so you know growing in prayer winning in the spiritual battle spiritual war sorry personal growth which is like knowing God Christ likeness of character spiritual empowerment which is like prophecy and scripture Holy Spirit fullness spiritual unity you know and just, just going through everything just giving you exactly where you can find it at the next thing they have are what they call word wealth which have a yellow box and it says word wealth with a sword because obviously the word is a sword and um, they're basically kind of like word studies if you will they give you the Greek or Hebrew definition the meaning and they break it down and explain what it is according to the scripture and you will always be able to find it because the actual word that's within the text of the scripture will be bold so you'll know which goes with which um, and sometimes there will be some that have like an asterisk which will take you to like the center section which has like references and cross and cross references which will tell you where the word wealth can be found at in another book and these are all the different words that you will find so a good variety of words in here that you'll find the next is praying the word and basically it's exactly what it is they take a scripture or a couple of scriptures and write a prayer based off of that so it's basically praying the word with prayer hands and a green box and this is the index for where you can find certain some of the prayers at. and I think this is great for those of us who like prayer prompts I'm a huge fan of prayer prompts I really enjoy them because they help me to not only pray scripture over my life but help me to figure out what it is that I want to pray about or need to pray about and I think this would go great with my praying the scripture or praying the word Bible that I got so it's just you know one two pages the next item is called truth in action and basically what it is is it looks like this um, as you're reading the text, you will find that it has little numbers on the side of it that are circled. Um, and at the end of each book of the Bible, you will find this chart that kind of gives you the truth, the text where you can find the truth, and some way to actually live that out in your life. So it's kind of like a hands-on application kind of setup, which I adore. Then obviously you have your... Um, your regular charts that you get within the text your in-text maps and that's pretty much it then you go into the preface of the New King James translation 
and all that, your abbreviations, which is kind of standard, and then you have the books of the Bible um, and their abbreviations from the Old and New Testament. Then you go into the Old Testament. So, this is a study Bible, so with it being a study Bible, you will have Bible book introductions. So, you have this blue box up here, which gives you, got like, gives you kind of like the main items, which are who wrote the book, the date, the theme, and the keywords. And then you get more in-depth information about the author, the date, the content that you can find within the book of Genesis or whatever book you're reading. Um, then you'll get like a personal application of how you can apply that book to your life, how Christ is revealed in that, how, how, how the Holy Spirit was at work, and then an outline of the book. So pretty much here's what you get. I'm going to flip ahead to my first little tabby um and here you can see an in-text chart as well as an in-text map here's what they look like really nice colors not too bright not too crazy the font on this is 10 point if i'm not mistaken because it's the comfort comfort font from thomas nelson which is great um and it's pretty much two column like this if you want to include the center column it's three columns you get two columns of the actual scripture then a center column which will have like your cross references and then your bottom section which will have your study notes so that is the first one and i could take that off now <laughs> so that's pretty much how it is set up let me move this bible over just a tad bit more so i can get as much as possible in frame um, so moving on to the next so here is where I can show you guys how they have the different kind of um, setups going so here is the word wealth which gives you obviously a definition and this is for Exodus 3 and 7 so if you flip to Exodus 3 7 and the actual text you can see that no is bold so we know that this word wealth goes with that scripture and that word um, here's a kingdom dynamics and there is a prayer right there moving along here is another in-text map this one is the exodus from Egypt and it does give you a little snippet of a note at the bottom which I think is great So then we go in to the truth in action, and this is for the book of Ruth. So here we are at the beginning of the book of Ruth. You have your book introduction stuff, so your author date themes. Um, so you have your author and date, your purpose, your content, how Christ is revealed, how the Holy Spirit is at work, your personal application, and then your outline of Ruth. Um, obviously your kingdom dynamics, your word wealth, your cross references there, your two column text, your commentaries and text maps. So you have different things for different uh, purposes. Here's praying the word. But I don't know if you guys can tell, um, but there are numbers. So this one says three. You turn the page, you have three here and one. You turn the page again, here is two, and there is two. So these little numbers all go with the chart so here is the truth in action so basically you get the truth what Ruth teaches from that so let's just go to chapter one um, actually I don't even think chapter one had a note to it yet actually no it does so here it says four um, and I'm gonna zoom in quickly for you guys So you can see a little bit more. So it says four right there. And it says, And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest each in the house of her husband. Okay? So we have that zooming back out. I'm going to flip back to... The truth in action section and let me take off the tab because I don't no longer I no longer need it but um we have number four so like I said this has a number four so you would look here for number four and it says truth but Ruth teaches so four is the walk of faith it says Ruth's life is a beautiful picture of both faith and faithfulness faithfulness 
When given the option to return to her own family and their gods, she chose instead to put her faith in the Lord and remain loyal to Naomi. The way of faith and the blessing is seldom comfortable, but God's presence is its worthy reward. So the text is obviously chapter 1, verse 8, which it starts at verse 8 and it goes down to 18. And it tells you, and then it gives you the action, what Ruth invites us to do. So it invites us to, one, choose faith over the familiar. And it tells us to remain steadfast in our loyalty to the Lord, which I love, love, love about this Bible because it gives you some real things that you can really truly apply to your life. Let me zoom back in. I don't know why this isn't working properly. Okay. So moving on, we have in text kind of maps or pictures here. This is the plan of Solomon's temple. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the temple that David ended up creating, but the one that Solomon actually built. So um, I like that. That's really nice. Moving on next. We have the Christ of the Psalm. So this basically gives you the Psalm, the portrayal, and how it was fulfilled in the New Testament. I really like that. That's a chart. Here's another Kingdom Dynamics. We have another kind of, I guess, chart map. I'm not sure what they would call this or what they would um, mention it. I think it's considered a map. But um, this is Ezekiel's Temple, which you can find in 40 and 5. And I really, really just love the way they lay out the temple for you. That's really nice. I'm not sure what the S and all that stands for. But, you know, this is something that I would definitely love to look more into. I love learning about the temples and how they were built and the locations. I just, I don't know. I'm not a history fanatic, but there are certain things about history that I do like, especially when it comes to like the archaeological aspect. I love that, which I think this will go hand in hand with the archaeological Bible that I received. OK, so here we have the ends of the book of Malachi, which now ends the Old Testament. And then between the Old and New Testament, this has bridging the Testament, seeing the picture of how the Old Testament concludes in history and how the period between the testaments unfolded so you have this kind of like timeline a map some information about it so I like that and the next thing that was included is the harmony of the gospels and I like bibles that include the harmonies of the harmony of the gospels so that you know um, which parts of the gospels go hand in hand and some of the time you don't have a lot that you know mesh together but most of the times they mesh as you can see here, the truth about John the Baptist, there is that throughout the Gospels. So, and this is like really, really long, but I do like that. It's, it's a long one. Then we dive into the New Testament and it tells that the words of Christ are in red, which I am a fan of Bibles that have the word of Christ in red. I don't know what it is, but I just love seeing the word of Christ in red. Um, it just reminds me of the blood of Jesus and, uh, yeah. It really has no true meaning just for me. I find that it helps me. Um, it has more of a greater impact. It might just be a mental thing, but I love words of Christ in red. So moving to the next thing that I want to show you guys. Again, here is how it looks in the New Testament. You have your kingdom dynamics, your word wealth, and then praying the word. And then obviously the word of Christ is in red. Your study notes at the bottom and your center column, which has your cross references. And I actually do want to show you guys quickly if I can find one. I don't know if I can find one. Yes, I can. Okay, so. I'm going to scoot this over. Um, so this goes for verse 34. So I'm going to go to quickly verse 34, which says um, a new commandment. So new has an asterisk next to it. Okay. So what you would do is for verse 34, you would find 34 here. And obviously the A goes towards uh, a new con um, commandment, but the asterisk you would go to and it says CWW. The WW is obviously word wealth at 2 Corinthians 5.17. And I'm actually going to flip to 2 Corinthians 5.17 quickly to show you guys. Uh, 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 uh. Gotta get to it. So I'm in Second Corinthians now, and let's go to five seventeen. 
and over here you have 517 new so i love that about this bible and again zooming back out Alrighty, so that's that. Which is the next one? So here we go. So before you dive into the book of Revelations, they give you Revelation. I don't know why I say Revelations, but um, this is Jude. It's the end of Jude, so you get your truth in action, obviously. Um, so once you, before you dive into the book of Revelation, they give you this article here which is dealing with the last things the rapture the second coming and millennium so it's kind of an article with like charts and things like that about the book of revelations so you have a lot of like timeline stuff going on here which i think is crucial and amazing then it goes into an article of studying the book of revelation which i also think is great because i don't feel like you can study revelation as you study other books of the bible one because it's the last book of the bible and it's probably one of the crucial books of the bible um which tells about the second coming and things like that so i feel like you need to really study it differently and um the study notes which within this are very different so um it talks about the two different ways that you have your study notes so you have two basic interpretations or interpretive approaches that are annotated throughout so you have your classic historical um, historic approach and then you also have your dispensational approach but those notes are kind of like in a bracket and i guess there's another one which there are um, two capable scholars which have contributed the two different notes which are dr earl w moray which gave the classic approach to it and i'm not sure because i haven't honestly read through this but yeah it just tells you how to study <laughs> When I say I've, I've had this for a week, you guys, and I fell in love with it. So here's a book of Revelation. Obviously, this one gives you a little bit more information as far as, like, the uh, book introduction. You guys see the basics, author, date, theme, keywords. Then you get more information on the author, background, and date. This one has occasion and purpose. This one also has visions and symbols. Context, personal application. Content, personal application. Christ revealed the Holy Spirit at work and then your outline so each book intro will have different aspects to it so definitely you know I love book intros then you have your outline continued then you get into your text so where they were talking about the dispensational kind of interpretation is here so you have two different types of study notes you have your basic study notes for okay so here we have um, notes for chapter 2 verses 12 to 17 you have your basic historic kind of standard study note but then you have your dispensational interpretation which is bracketed so you have that throughout um the book of revelations which i think is phenomenal in getting people to understand more about it so you will see the brackets throughout they're not on every kind of like verse but um you can see So yeah, I don't even know why I had this here, but um, again, here's a view of the praying the word, the kingdom dynamics, and the word wealth. So after that, you have your truth in action for Revelation, and then you go into the, I think it was the seven articles they had for the kingdom dynamics. So you have Holy Spirit Gifts and Power by Paul Walker, and I don't need this tab so I can take that off. And that's great. And these articles are pretty lengthy. Um, you have The Key of Suffering, Unlocking God's Glory by Jane Hansen Hoyt. And I'm so excited to dive into these so much. You have Worship and Intercession, The Calling of All Believers by Robert Stearns. A Flame with Passion for World Evangelism by Reinhard Bonnick. I'm probably saying that name wrong, so I apologize. The Believer's Potential and Pathway for Ministering Healing to the Nations by John D. Dawson. Understanding Messianic Jewish Ministry by Shira Sorko Ram. And I apologize if I butchered that name. And that one goes for a few pages. 
right yeah and then you have how to lead someone to jesus by robert morris and he gives you some things which i think are great obviously to pray building your relationship talk about the things that matter such as an abundant life um eternity your relationship with god he has expect a que questions but stay focused on spiritual truth which i think is really good because a lot of people when they're asked questions about god um they tend to take it personal or think secularly and i think you just need to really focus on what the bible says and give scriptural context to it um keep it simple which many people don't seem tend to do and then you have ask the most important questions lead the most important prayers and it gives you a simple little prayer then you go into your concordance which i think is standard in most study bibles you know a good concordance is what you need and i like it it's really hefty it's a hefty concordance um, and then you get a blank page. I think it was two blank pages. Yeah, you get two blank pages. But I use this page to do, like, pen testing on. So I used a basic big round stick. I used an oil gel pen that I got from the discount store. Um, some Pilot G2s, Sharpie Art Pens, Paper Mate Ink Joy Pen, my normal Pentel RSVP, and then some highlighters such as the Sharpie Smear Guard, the Crayola... Uh, the Crayola, what are they called? Oh my god, these, you guys, the super tips. <laughs> um, I use the Pilot Frictions and then the Zebra Mount Liners. Just to see which, which would work well in this. And um, as far as highlighters, I would say the Pilot Frictions, which look like this. I use the pastel colors, so these work great. You could use the Zebra ones. Um, I would say use the kind of pastel warmer colors. And then as far as pens go, a regular big pen, which if I can find one, I don't know where it is. Okay, not quite sure where my big pen ran off to because I don't see it anywhere near me. Which is, oddly enough, very strange that I can't find my pen. <laughs> but a, a standard big pen will work um, as well as the Pentel RSVPs. So I'm basically just using these two pages for like pen testing when I get new pens that I want to try out. I think that's great to do in the Bible. And then towards the end, you have your maps. Obviously, Bibles come with anywhere from six to eight, I think, full color maps. This one is not as like bright, but it's nice. Um, I don't get much of a glare from this one, which I can appreciate. It's very much kind of matte, but not matte, if that makes sense. So you have your maps. And then that is the end of the Bible. So I truly, honestly love this Bible. I am currently, well, before I get into that, I do want to show you guys um, Psalms real quick. So as far as Psalms go, because I told you guys at the end of every book of the Bible, you have that kind of truth in action. But Psalms actually breaks theirs up by book, if I can find it. So I have to find it because I don't know <laughs> when book one of Psalms actually ends. Okay, so if you guys can see, it says truth and action through Psalms. And this is specifically for book one. So for Psalms 1 through 41, and you get the truth and actions for that. So I like that they did that for Psalms because Psalms is very long. It's, it's 150, I believe, yeah, 150 chapters, uh, books, yeah, chapters. So, you know, that's that's long. So I like that they break it up by book. But. Also with that, you would have to like find a way to find it or remember how many books are in each. But quickly, I just want to show you guys, I am currently doing a study because I told you guys in the update that I have not been studying like I'm supposed to. It's been forever since I studied since my birthday, which was in June. Um, we're now in October and I'm still in Mark on chapter three and it sucks because I really do want to dive back into the word. But um, to get back into it, I'm actually taking time to do a study with Kim Cash Tate. I absolutely love her. You guys have heard me rave about her before. She is the author of Cling. <sighs> Such a phenomenal book. I've done a book club with that book on the with the Daughter of Increase Facebook group. A review is coming for that really soon. Um, I can show you guys the book. It's right here. So here is the book. Cling, and this is my first copy of the book that I had. I do have two copies of this. But she's the author of that. She is now doing a study on James. She did studies already on Ephesians, 1st and 2nd Samuel, and um, 
now she has one on James that she's doing. So I'm diving into that. I need to just go back in and read the introduction to James. But um, yeah, this is the stuff that we basically went through in the first video. So I was like underlining and circling and things like that. Just to see how the pen really worked in the Bible. And then I have a separate kind of notebook here with my notes here from that study. Which I'm still going to do some more notes on separately. But um, yeah, so this is a really great Bible. It's probably one of my new favorite ones outside of my King James Woman Study Bible from Thomas Nelson. But I've always wanted a new King James translation Bible, especially to take the church. Because I really am fond of the new King James translation. And this is a translation that I'm really going to be using more so more often when I'm going to be teaching here. I guess I don't want to say teaching because it sounds weird. But when I'm leading like Bible studies and stuff like that, this will be the translation I use. I love it. It's more closely related to the King James. I also want to grab um, a NASB Bible, which is a New American Standard Bible. I really want one of those as well. That is on my list to get. But um, I think I want a um, John MacArthur NASB Bible. But yeah, that is it for this video, you guys. I love this Bible. I highly recommend it. And I would say get your hands on it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.